It's Andrew McGinnis joined by Dave Koken. It is May 25th. We're talking about the games for May 26th. However, Dave, I've been enjoying betting on this league. I've, I've had a lot of fun learning about it. How have your experiences been? I'm looking forward to doing this show with you. Uh, how have your thoughts been and experiences been with this league so far? Well, they weren't great over the weekend, uh, but you know, I, I'm, it's baseball. Uh, it's minor league baseball to be sure, but it's something you can break down and handicap and hopefully get an edge on. And uh, I think I've got a couple of games on the Tuesday schedule that look pretty good. And we'll talk about those as we run down the entire schedule. Yeah, we did a show with Prez, you know, breaking down the differences between maybe the MLB and the KBO and finding some changes. But like you said, Dave, I mean, there were a few games on the weekend for me where I just saw some sloppy, sloppy mistakes oh, yeah. in bullpens. It's just atrocious. So I'm excited. The format for this show is pretty much going to be Every single day, uh, it's going to be 4 o'clock Eastern time. Dave and I are going to be kind of going over the games from the previous day, or I guess it would be the, the morning of, and then breaking down the next games uh, for the next cards. So I guess uh, without further ado, Dave, uh, we'll get things going here. We'll start things off. Uh, we'll go with uh, the Kia Tigers taking on the KT Wiz here. Uh, to me, a very interesting matchup. The Kia Tigers 10 and 8 and the KT Wiz 7 and 10. We'll start things out with you here. What are your thoughts? First of all, just on these two teams as a whole. And secondly, what are your thoughts on this as a, as a betting matchup? Well, uh, uh, Kia's, uh, let me get my figures here. They're, they're not much offensively. And in this league, that, that's a bit of a problem because you've got to be able to put the runs up against the weaker pitchers in the league. Uh, the Wiz, of, uh, KT Wiz, they're scoring a lot of runs. They lead the league in runs scored. And yet the funny thing is, I don't know that they're a great offensive team. They've had some good fortune in some games. Uh, their pitching is sketchy. But tonight, I think you've got a potential pitcher's duel here with Drew Gagnon on the mound uh, for uh, Kia. And it's Bay on the mound for the Wiz. And Bay's put up some really good numbers so far. He's been a little bit fortunate. Uh, 0.90 ERA is masked by not too many strikeouts, but he's gotten a lot of soft contact. So the batting average on balls in play is not outlandishly low. You'd think sometimes when a guy's got an ERA like that and he's not getting strikeouts, boy, he must be getting lucky. But batting average on balls in play is only 318. So it's actually um, in the average neighborhood, at least as far as uh, KBO is concerned. Um, the control is big for him. And this is, I think, the biggest key in this league is guys who can throw strikes. If you can throw strikes, you're going to do well in this league. Walks are the Waterloo for pitchers in any league, but particularly in this league. He's only had four walks in uh, 20 and a third innings with 11 strikeouts. So good numbers uh, for uh, for Bay. Gagnon is, is starting to put together the kind of numbers that might establish him as one of the top pitchers in this league. And I go to the walks and strikeouts, 16 and a third innings. The five walks is acceptable. 23 strikeouts, though. So he's getting... A lot of swings and misses, especially on his breaking stuff. And his last performance was definitely his best. And if you look at his numbers, 3.86 ERA, but the FIP, which is, to me, a more reliable indicator of how a pitcher's actually performing, it's well under three. It's 2.77. So I think he's a pitcher that's a go with right now. And despite the fact that KT has been an over machine so far, I think they've gone over in uh, 12 out of 16 and one game later on the number. Uh, I think the under is the way to play tonight. The market is reacting that way as well. It was 10. It's gone to 9.5. I think you've got a pretty good chance of a pitcher's duel here. And the value to me, despite the fact that one of these teams has been going over almost every game, I think you look at the under here. Well, today, uh, looking at these matchups, we're seeing a lot of great pitching, a great pitchers getting out there. And, Dave, I think a point that uh, you brought up on our, our show with Prez was, you know, you can look at value. We can talk about value all you want and getting good odds, but you want to pick winners and that's kind of what I've noticed here as well, though. To be the contrarian, sometimes we're seeing a great pitcher out there for, let's say, a poor team, and we're getting better odds on the opposition. So tonight, I might be looking at that here. But yeah, I mean, this uh, this KT team has been a team that I looked at. They had a 1-7 and seven start, Dave, and they really yep. picked things up. They're averaging seven runs per game. Uh, you know, and, and this is a, a league right now, important for me to mention, favorites right now are winning 59.8% of the games, home teams 529 but over is hitting at around a 50, uh, 55% clip. So that'll know, come it, down. It, Dave, it's been hard betting unders. Uh, I had a few unders and uh, I had the Samsung under the other night. And uh, of course they won 13, nothing. I mean, I thought I was looking pretty great when uh, Dusan couldn't even score, but 
Yeah, I mean, looking at this game here, the Kia Tigers, Here's I have a bone to pick with the Kia Tigers because this team, I think they had 15 hits and they produced, what was it, three or four runs. I mean, usually when I see that happen, I see an explosion coming in the next game or two. And, you know, I understand the, the odds makers are going to have to adjust, but I'm just not really prepared to go against this KT team right now and expect them to slow things down because realistically, not only, Dave, are they really scoring runs themselves, uh, but they're getting runs scored on them as well. I mean, they're averaging mm-hmm. seven runs per game and six runs against. Uh, you know, I'm going to try and keep on this train uh, before it goes the opposite direction. So as far as the side goes, I mean, this is probably the most even game we're seeing. Uh, but I don't really have a side. I mean, I think he is going to come into this game very highly motivated. We've got a great pitching matchup here. Um, you know, it could go either way, I'd say. But uh, I'm more focused on the total. Uh, Dave, I want to start off by just asking you, have you been doing any in-game betting on this? Are you much no. of an in-game better or no, not really? Zero. No, zero. It's not widely available. Just like first fives. I'd love, I'd love to give out first five plays, but they're just not widely available. I mean, of, of all the outs I've got, and I've got a lot, uh, I've got two that are taking them. Neither one's taking big limits. And in our business, you have to give out games where anybody can bet the games at approximately the same number. So I'm not bothering with in-game at all. Uh, I haven't even looked at it, to be honest with you. I don't know where it's available. And uh, uh, first fives I'm avoiding simply because I'd like to play them. But if my clients can't get them, then I'm not going to give them out. Absolutely. And you can follow uh, Dave at Dave Koken on Twitter. Find his plays at wagertalk.com. Myself at McGinnis Picks. Find my plays at sportsmemo.com. And yes, it's important to follow these odds and make sure you're keeping a good eye on them. Because the more the pot, more uh, popular this league gets... Uh, the faster these are changing every single hour. We're going to go with the LG Twins, Hanwha Eagles. Uh, LG Twins, quite a bit of a favorite here, Dave. They, they've kind of gotten juiced up. It seems like, you know, every single minute, a lot of people liking this uh, this Twins team. Uh, what are you thinking about them right now? And more importantly, I want to ask you as well, the Hanwha Eagles have been a bottom feeder here. Do they get it together or are they just an auto fade here uh, for you uh, early in the season? I don't know about auto fade, but, uh, you know, so the bets are going against them. Let's put it that way. This line's <laughs> going up like 25 cents uh, today. Um, this is a kind of a tough game because Chad Bell will make his debut for the season uh, for Hanwa. And, yeah, he was okay for them last year. And he does profile as the guy who's supposed to be the ace of the team. He's been out with an elbow problem. So I don't know how long he's slated to go. Uh, it's tough to get that information. I don't know if he's on a pitch count. You know, if this were Major League Baseball, you you'd be able to find all kinds of information as to, you know, whether he's going to be out there for 60 pitches, 75 pitches or whatever, but you can't find that here. At least I can't. Uh, the flip side of it is Flexen, or excuse me, Wilson on the mound for uh, the twins. He's been, uh, he hasn't been lucky and he also hasn't been very good. Uh, I, I, I think he's, he should start coming around, but the walks have been a bit of an issue. Uh, he just hasn't had great command. He's also, had some ridiculously tough – he's had a really bad time with men on base. Uh, if you get on base against this guy, you score. His screen rate's only 52%, which is absurdly low. So it means he's he's giving up runs uh, – crooked numbers are going up against Wilson. When he has a bad inning, it seems to just get magnified. I think he's probably the right side here. Because Bell again, hasn't pitched, and Hanwha is just a, a, a terrible baseball team. They don't have any offense. They've only scored 69 runs. That's four runs a game, and in this league, that's really low. So the edge would certainly appear to be with the Twins, but you're going to have to pay the uh, pay the piper as far as that goes, uh, as far as the price goes. Yeah, 96 runs for the Twins on the year and 69 for the Hanwha Eagles. The thing for me, Dave, is a lot of times you see a team that's not scoring runs, at least give me a defensive effort, right? At least, you know, support yourself defensively or at least with strong pitching wise. And they haven't been doing that either. Coming off a really tough series against NC. I mean, they've been able to keep some teams under, but for more, you know, for this part right now, the way I look at them, I'll be looking at betting the over with this team just because they're getting uh, beat on. I mean, a lot of times you can see for me anyway, this is my personal opinion. You can see a team uh, that's not scoring. And hopefully they'll try and at least, you know, put up some good pitching and, and do that. But right now they're just getting beat on by most teams. And yeah. I think until the odds makers really adjust, I'm going to look ahead here and I'm going to lock in the twins here as, as a play. I think it's worth it here uh, at a pretty strong number around minus 180. Um, you know, we talked about with, with Prez on that show about r- r- laying the run line. I know you're a fan of the minus one line. Right. Dave. This would probably yeah, be I, a good I, op- opportunity for it. Would you agree? Yeah, I, I think so. Of course, you don't really get your, you don't really get your, 
money's worth on uh, minus one and a half in this league because this game's a good example. Uh, you know, minus one, 175, thereabouts, 180, and yet they're minus 115 on the runs line as well. So the the bookmakers know what the betters are trying to do, and they're not going to they're not going to give you a real fair price on the runs line. But if you want to lower the liability uh, on the money line, it's still not a bad idea to do the minus one. The SK Wyverns taking on the Deuce on Bears. And this this one here, I mean, Deuce on Bears are very interesting right now for me. I mean, this is a team that uh, they're, they're leading the league in overs. Um, they, they've well, been a quality yeah. team. And, their, offense, uh, their offense is good and their pitching stinks. Yeah. So they, they go over yeah. a lot. Especially like, late in the game, eh, Dave? Well, yeah. I mean, the team's given up 122 runs. They've given up more runs than any team in the league. And, you know, the offense is they have to hit every game. To win, basically, uh, that may be the case again tonight. And yeah, it's uh, the matchup is Park versus Flexen. Flexen's coming around pretty good, and, and this looks like a fairly easy spot uh, for the Bears. Flexen has got some good numbers: two and zero, two point seven zero, four walks, twenty two strikeouts in his twenty innings of work. That's really solid, and there's no reason to expect that he'll have a great deal of trouble with an SK team that's uh, just bad at everything. They've only scored 61 runs. They're the worst offense in the league. Uh, Parks on the mound tonight. He's yeah, he's been okay. He's been all right. Actually, I I kind of like some of the numbers that he's got. His peripherals are are actually pretty good. He's had a terrible time as far as batting average on balls in play. You can't get unluckier than this. 429. So he's pitched a lot better than his than his base numbers would indicate. The problem is, is he going to get any run support tonight against Flexen? I don't know. I would probably lean to the under in this game, despite the fact that Doosan uh, 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 can't pitch. Uh, they're facing a team that can't hit. So to me, the under looks like uh, the option that makes the most sense as far as the, the, uh, the game itself goes, if I can get my mouse to work properly and get over to my screen here. Um, it's, it's a big number, obviously, in the game. You're looking at 230. Total in the game, 9.5. Over is slightly juiced. I think I lean to the under in the game. But it's not going to be a play for me. Yeah, we're talking about totals here. I mean, I think a really good point to, to bring up is these team totals. A lot of people looking at full game overs, but if you like a certain team, go ahead and drop it on the team total if your book is offering that or your sports betting website because, you know, we're seeing teams that are losing by margin. I'm talking yeah, like it, it, 10, 5, 12, yeah. Dave, that are you're still not getting a lot of close games. Over. Would you agree with that? Do you, yes. Yeah. You're not getting a lot of close games in the league. Uh, that that there just haven't been a lot of one run games. So that's the other side of it. As far as the runs line is concerned is that, you know, based on what's been taking place, if you pick the winner of the game, the minus one and a half isn't bad, even though you're not getting full value as far as the price is concerned. Yeah. I mean, I can get the deuce on bears right now. Team total uh, over five and a half at minus 125. That's the play I'm going to like in this game here. Obviously a very juice number here on the money line. I got to agree with you as well, Dave. I mean, the only thing that worries me is that I told you, I, I was telling you about the Samsung one that I had, the Samsung loss and that I had the under in that game and they scored 13 runs themselves. So I'd be worried that uh, Doosan would just carry this the load themselves. But I do think it's a good spot here. And like I mentioned off the top of the show, we're seeing some great pitchers out there tonight. So, uh, or tomorrow morning. So I uh, will be interested to see how the totals work. And, you know, if these numbers keep going up, the odds makers are only going to have to, uh, keep adjusting them. We'll move, move down the list here well, to the Samsung yeah, you know, Lions. Let me, let me just uh, note one thing, though. Uh, the overs are going to be more prevalent on the weekends because you get you get back of the rotation guys and the bullpens are already stretched out uh, from working earlier in the week. I think on the Tuesday and Wednesday cards, you're likely to get better pitching because the better starters are out there. Once you get to the back of the rotations yeah. with these teams, you've got some guys who are just not very good and – and don't, don't have good control, and they eat up pitch counts. They're, they're at 100 pitches in five innings. So you got a lot of bullpen innings being logged on the weekends, and that really does lead itself to overs. It's something we've learned over the first few weeks in this league. Samsung Lions and Lotte Giants. Interesting one here. we got Straley taking on Choi Che Huang. And uh, this is, you know, I, I think Straley has been going to be one of the more stronger pitchers in this league here, Dave. But I have a problem with this price. I don't like this number I'm getting here. Uh, with this Lotte Giants team, and that's something that kind of concerns me. I mean, Samsung Lions coming off an offensive explosion with 13 runs 
They look their strongest that we've seen them, and they've been kind of a bubble team for me. They've been very up and down. I mean, they're ninth in the league right now. Uh, I think they could be you know, a little more competitive than they have, and teams are going to go on runs. So I'm looking at this right now, and I'm not comfortable fading them at a minus 170 or 175 price uh, looking at that at all. One thing I might look at here is this Lotte Giants team to get their act together, though, and start scoring some runs at, as they had a little bit of a lull mm. for a short period of time. And now they're playing a Samsung Lions team that despite their last game was a shutout, they've been very, very easy to, to score on and uh, to get the job done. We'll look at the Samsung Lions right now. I mean, you know, close to six runs per game. They're averaging Lotte Giants right now. I mean, they, they need to find a team to start beating up, and I think this might be the team for the Lote Giants to, to kind of go after. So I, I don't like this number here I'm getting with Lote, but I think we could possibly see some runs here in this one. And the stats don't point towards it, Dave, but I think if there's a team that Lote is going to get it together against, it might be uh, the Samsung team. Right, and of course the tough part of that is that they're facing a good pitcher tonight. Uh, and uh, Choi, and, and I know I'm mispronouncing his, his name, but you know I'm sorry, uh, but he's been good. Uh, he's been lucky as well. The 2.65 ERA is a bit phony. Uh, his control is so-so. His FIP is 4.29. So there's going to be some regression with him, and it might be that Lotte can get to him this evening. Straley's uh, been a bit of a mystery so far. He's looked really good in a couple of starts, but he's also had control problems. He's got a lot of walks, uh, 10 walks in 22 innings. He's got a lot of strikeouts too. But, I, you know, I, uh, he's pitching okay, but I wouldn't say that he's been – a stud so far, and the Giants need him to be a number one starter. It might well be that this is the game where he can get it going as far as that goes because he's facing a team with a bad offense. Uh, I know Samsung exploded for the 13 runs over the weekend, but this is not a good offensive team. So I think Straley is justifiably getting heavy action today. This line has gone way up. And it opened at uh, – it, It's gone way up from the opener. Oh, way up. I mean, it, uh, the first number at Circa – was 155 and it's going to 180. Uh, at Pinnacle, it actually opened 132 and it's going to 160 there. So they're a little bit lower. Uh, Westgate's got it. Superbook's got it 162. You know, look, this is a game where, to me, if you didn't bet it early, you kind of missed the boat. Exactly. Uh, and uh, so I, you can still play it, play it, but I'm not a big fan of sacrificing 25 or 30 cents in terms of what the price was and what the price is in the long haul, that's going to get you in a lot of trouble. You just can't do that and win long term. So this is why you got to get up early and get your numbers made early so that you're ready to jump in at the opening number. I think uh, Lotte, the Giants were probably a pretty good play at the minus 130-ish, 135 neighborhood. I'm not so sure that they are at this price. And it's interesting to follow these series. You know, this season is very, very young. We'll be doing this show every single day of the week, Monday through Friday, Friday, 4 p.m. Eastern time. Thanks so much for everyone joining in. We have Bill in Vegas, Nick Borman, Robert joining us, uh, Money Charts. Thanks so much for joining here. Get the chat box active. And it's going to be a lot of fun recapping the games as well, Dave. So I think we're starting this show on a really good day. Uh, you know, obviously they play every single day except for Monday morning for us. So a uh, great day for us to start things off here. And, you know, I think that will be a great, uh, great matchup. We just have to see if Straley can kind of live up to his hype and, and see if he will be that uh, that pitcher that he's said to be. Uh, we're going to move down the list here. And, you know, Kiwoom Heroes take on the NC Dinos. Yeah. He, here's a team, Dave. I mean, let, let's let's take a second to talk about this here. The, the Dinos have gotten the job done. I mean, this is a team right now, 14-3, and three, just absolutely dominant. Um, you know, do you want to look to go against this team? I mean, I faded them one game against the Bears. Uh, but the funny thing is they're not they're not putting up insane numbers. They're just the only team playing quality baseball. Would you well, agree with they, that? I mean, they're they not are, making errors. They are putting up insane numbers because in 17 games, they're plus 43 runs. Right. That's that's a lot. Okay. Mm-hmm. That, that, that's a really good margin. And I don't see them losing this game. You know, I don't think it happened. It's one game. But the heroes are coming off a terrible game over the weekend where they got shot out by a pretty mediocre pitcher. Uh, they sent a lead in the mound tonight, and he hasn't been very good. Uh, so you'd think the Dinos should be, or the Dinos should be able to get some offense going here. Koo has been outstanding uh, for NC. Really good numbers. Four walks, 25 strikeouts in 22 innings. The FIP is 1.96. So while his ERA is ridiculously low, it's it, it's it's kind of legitimate. Uh, 
The only thing I can say is batting average on balls in play is 170, and he's got a 92% straight rate. So there's going to be some regression, and maybe Kiwum can get it going against him. But I would look at the de- at the Dinos here. I think they're the right side in the game. It's a fairly high price. I think this is one where you go the minus one route and feel pretty good about it. Yeah, let's look at who this team has played, the Kiwum Heroes. I mean, they played Samsung and they played SK, Dave. I think it's a kind of a strength of schedule for them the way they started. I think this team will definitely regress and, and go downwards. Like you said, uh, this is probably a good price, good opportunity to grab them. Um, but, you know, I just wanted to go back to it again with this Dinos team. I mean, they're averaging 3.53 runs against. So it's yeah. not like they're just, like you said, you alluded to it with that ratio, Dave. It's not like they're just putting up massive runs. And I love that, you know. I use it, you know, this expression when I'm handicapping basketball or when I'm coaching, you know, play on both sides of the ball. Well, here in, 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 in this baseball match, you know, this baseball league, they're playing on both sides. You know, they're playing good defensively and good offensively. So, yeah, the Dinos have to be a strong play here. And you have to think that uh, that's probably only going to go up. Uh, Dave, I, I wanted to get uh, maybe some top plays out of you. Any kind of just a recap. And, I, I, played, uh, a I played a couple of games. I played the Dinos minus one. Uh, and I did take the under 10 in the uh, Tigers whiz game, and that 10 is gone. It's nine and a half now. I think it's still playable, but uh, the best number is uh, no longer available. So that's all I did tonight, and uh, hopefully we'll have a decent uh, decent result. Excellent. Well, you can find Dave on Twitter at Dave Koken, myself, Andrew McGinnis, at McGinnis Picks, live here on the Wager Talk TV YouTube channel every single day, Monday to Friday. 4 p.m. Eastern time, recapping the plays and giving out new picks uh, for you guys. Thank you so much for joining me here. Sorry for the late start here today. We'll try and uh, get started that, on time. And, yeah, uh, that, that's my fault. I uh, I have a Mac and uh, use a Safari browser, and I had to download a Firefox browser because this program isn't compatible with Safari. So my bad. It took an extra five minutes. <laughs> it's okay. Sorry. It's okay. All right, guys, uh, look for those team totals if your book offers it. Uh, cash some tickets. Uh, games are tomorrow morning, remember? So when we're talking about these games, it's going to always be the next day. So uh, it's going to be fun for Dave and I doing that. Uh, Dave and I are in complete different time zones. I'm on the far East Coast. He's the far West Coast. We're talking on May 25th. Uh, these games are May 26th. We'll see you tomorrow here in the chat box. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll see you tomorrow.